What is a common example of baiting in social engineering? Is it A, impersonation? Is it B, tailgating? Is it C, offering free software downloads? Or is it D, shoulder surfing? Choose one answer. You're out five seconds. And the correct answer is C, offering free software downloads. Baiting involves enticing individuals with something appealing. For instance, an attacker might distribute USB drives labeled as free software containing malicious software. Users intrigued by the free offer unknowingly compromise their systems. And for the incorrect answers, impersonation is when an attacker pretends to be someone else to deceive individuals. Tailgating pretends uh, to pertains to unauthorized individuals following authorized personnel into secure areas. And shoulder surfing involves obtaining sensitive information by looking over someone's shoulder. And for the next question of exam, question number two. And the question states, in a scenario where a system experiences a sudden spike in CPU usage, what type of attack is indicated? Is it A, DDoS attack? Is it B, ransomware attack? Is it C, SQL injection attack? Or is it D, phishing attack? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, DDoS attack. A distributed denial of service or DDoS attack overwhelms a system with traffic, causing a sudden increase in CPU usage. For example, multiple systems flood a web server, making it unavailable to legitimate users. And for the incorrect answers, ransomware encrypts files and demands a ransom, not causing significant CPU spikes. SQ SQL injection may not directly impact CPU usage, but can manipulate dat databases. And phishing involves tricking individuals into revealing sensitive information through deceptive means. And for the next question for exam, question number three. And the question states, what is a potential indicator of a cross-site scripting or XSS attack? Is it A, unusual database queries? Is it B, unexpected file modifications? Is it C, cookie theft? Or is it D, slow network performance? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, cookie theft. In an XSS attack, an attacker injects malicious scripts into a website, potentially leading to cookie theft. For instance, an attacker might inject a script capturing user cookies, compromising their sessions. And for the incorrect answers, unusual database queries more is more indicative of SQL injection than XSS. Unexpected file modifications is more aligned with other type of attacks and slow network performance is not a typical indicator of an XSS attack. And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, what could indicate a port scanning activity on a network? Is it A, high CPU usage on servers? Is it B, unusual patterns in firewall logs? Is it C, regular network performance? Or is it D, updated antivirus signatures? You now have five seconds. Choose one answer. And the correct answer is B, unusual patterns in firewall logs. Port scanning involves probing a network for open ports, triggering unusual patterns in firewall logs. For instance, repeated connection attempts to various ports may indicate scanning activity. And for the incorrect answers, high CPU usage on servers is not directly related to port scanning. Regular network performance, port scanning may impact performance but not necessarily indicated. And updated antivirus signatures impo are important for general security but not indicative of port scanning. And for the next question for exam, question number five. And the question states, what is a characteristic of an advanced persistent threat or APT group? Is it A, random and isolated attacks? Is it B, short duration attacks for financial gain? Is it C, targeted long term campaigns? Or is it D, inexperienced individuals with limited skills? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, targeted long term campaigns. APT groups conduct prolonged and focused campaigns, often targeting specific organizations or industries over an extended period. For example, an APT group may, might employ sophisticated techniques to gather intelligence over months or even years. And for the correct answers, random and isolated attacks are not a character, character, characteristic of APT groups. 
short duration attacks for financial gain are more aligned with cyber criminals than APT groups and inexperienced individuals with limited skills, APT groups are typically well resourced and skilled. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, what is the risk associated with privilege escalation vulnerabilities? Is it A, unauthorized access to sensitive data? Is it B, ineffective antivirus protection? Is it C, lack of physical security measures? Or is it D, slow network performance? You now have five seconds. Choose one answer. And the correct answer is A, unauthorized access to sensitive data. Privilege escalation vulnerabilities can allow attackers to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information. For example, an attacker exploiting a privilege escalation vulnerability might gain administrator access compromising sensitive databases. And for the incorrect answers, ineffective antivirus protection is not directly related to privilege escalation, lack of physical security measures are unrelated to privilege escalation, and slow network performance is not a typical consequence of privilege escalation. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, what is an example of a passive security assessment technique? Is it A, port scanning? Is it B, vulnerability scanning? Is it C, packet sniffing? Or is it D, penetration testing? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, packet sniffing. Passive techniques like packet sniffing involves monitoring without actively probing systems. For instance, using Wireshark to capture network traffic allows security, professional, security professionals to analyze communication patterns without directly interacting with systems. And for the incorrect answers, port scanning is an active technique for identifying open ports, vulnerability scanning is an active technique for finding vulnerabilities, and penetration testing is actively testing and exploiting vulnerabilities. And for the next question for exam, question number eight. And the question states, what is an example of a white box penetration testing approach? Is it A, no prior knowledge of the system? Is it B, limited information about the target? Is it C, full knowledge of a system architecture? Or is it D, partial knowledge of a network configuration? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C full knowledge of the system architecture. White box penetration testing involves having complete knowledge of the system architecture, aiding in a comprehensive assessment. For example, a white box tester may have access to source code, network diagrams, and other detailed information to simulate a thorough insider attack. And for the incorrect answers, no prior knowledge of the system. This is a characteristic of a black box testing. Limited information about the target is more aligned with gray box testing and partial knowledge of the network configurations is a gray box testing characteristic. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, why is security awareness training important in an enterprise environment? Is it A, it guarantees zero security incidents? Is it B, it minimizes the need for encryption? Is it C, it reduces the impact of social engineering? Or is it D, it eliminates the need for access controls? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. It reduces the impact of social engineering. Security awareness training helps employees recognize and mitigate the risks of social engineering attacks. For example, training can educate employees on how to identify phishing emails, reducing the likelihood of falling victim to such attacks. And for the incorrect answers, it guarantees zero security inc incidents. There's no training that can guarantee zero incidents. It minimizes the need for encryption. Encryption is a separate security measure and it eliminates the need for access controls. Access control are essential regardless of training. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, how does hypervisor-based virtualization enhance security in cloud computing? Is it A, by limiting resource scalability? Is it B, by reducing hardware redundancy? Is it C, by isolating virtual machines? Or is it D, by increasing network latency? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, by isolating virtual machines. Hypervisor-based virtualization provides strong isolation between virtual machines, enhancing security. For instance, if one virtual machine is compromised, the others remain unaffected due to the isolation provided by the hypervisor. 
and for the correct answers by limiting resource scalability. Virtualization often improves resource scalability by reducing hardware redundancy. Virtualization can enhance, actually, uh, hardware redundancy and by increasing network latency. Virtualization does not inherently increase network latency. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends, of course. I hope you found this video informative. I will see you guys next time.